Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty intriguing discovery from an extremely far away and extremely ancient galaxy discovered a few years ago. A galaxy that most likely formed approximately 250 million years after the formation of the universe, or essentially when the universe was only about 2% of its current age. And a galaxy that seems to have already existed when the early stars were still forming. With the recent discoveries suggesting that not only did this galaxy exist back then, but it was already quite well established and already had quite a complex shape. And this recent discovery is actually really surprising. But before this, I think I have to tell you a little bit more about the discovery itself and about the type of a galaxy this is. So this even has its own Wikipedia page. It's a galaxy known as JD1, and it's one of the farthest galaxies ever discovered. Here's what the scientists believe it might kind of look like, although we don't really get to see this particular image. This is just a reconstruction based on the data received. But the actual image sort of resembles this. And what's interesting is that this is a galaxy that formed during the so-called Dark Ages, the period in the formation of the universe when there was still a lot of gas blocking a lot of light, not really allowing scientists to see things very clearly. Or essentially when the universe was still extremely young, but it looks like during this period, some of the stars already managed to combine into a relatively complex formation that already existed as something that you see right here. Now this is the best reconstruction we have of what's happening here. But I guess what's super intriguing about all of this is the fact that the scientists have recently been able to determine that this seems to be a spiral galaxy. A galaxy that we think is relatively complex in its shape, and a galaxy that obviously resembles something similar to where we live, the Milky Way galaxy. And all of this was established by just looking at this blob, and specifically by measuring the redshifts coming from different parts of the blob itself. But as always, all of this became available as the telescopes have improved and as our observation techniques got better as well. In this case, all of this comes from the iconic ALMA telescope. The telescope has been doing a pretty good job at observing the ancient universe. But what's kind of impressive in this case is that the light has traveled the universe for approximately 13.9 billion light years. And that's because the redshift here is approximately 9.11. And also the galaxy that we're seeing is relatively small as well, in terms of galactic size. It's approximately 3000 light years across, or only about 3% in terms of the size of the Milky Way galaxy. And also its mass is much much lower than a typical galaxy as well. It's been determined to be a few billion masses of the Sun, which is actually not so different from some of the more massive black holes we've discovered so far, but definitely way way less massive than a typical galaxy. But in this case, the mass is definitely consistent with something that's only approximately 300 million years old. So in other words, the light that we're seeing here is approximately 550 million years old, which once again implies that the galaxy very likely formed 300 million years prior or about 250 million years after the beginning of the universe. But the most recent observations reported in the paper right here, that as always you can find in the description below, discovered something really intriguing coming from the various parts in that red blob that I showed you. They found slight variations in the wavelengths depending on the location where the scientists were looking, which usually indicates that certain parts are moving toward us and certain parts are moving away from us. Basically, they saw a redshift and blue shift. And by using the modeling techniques, they determined that it seemed that the galaxy was spinning with a speed of about 50 kilometers per second, which once again confirmed that this is a spinning spiral galaxy, something that we generally find very common in the modern universe, but something that's kind of not expected to exist in the early universe. Mostly because in a lot of modern formation theories of different galaxies, the shape itself takes quite a long time to develop. We don't expect a spiral galaxy to exist right away, especially in such a short time. And because their observations confirm that this is a disk galaxy and it's a spinning galaxy, all this made it even more intriguing. But the speed here is only 50 km per second. For the Milky Way galaxy, the speed is about 220 km per second, so at least 4.5 times higher. But based on these new observations, the scientists were able to definitively infer the mass of the galaxy and also confirm its age as well. Once again confirming that this is the earliest such galaxy we've ever seen, and the earliest spiral galaxy discovered so far. Well, I guess in this case maybe it's not a perfect spiral galaxy just yet. It's probably a spiral looking galaxy with a lot of instabilities everywhere, 
but may not really have a perfectly spiral shape and a flat disc just yet. This might take much longer to develop. Although really the most impressive part about this whole study is just the fact that they were able to use 54 radio telescopes of the ALMA observatory to actually determine variations in the redshift in this relatively tiny dot that essentially looks like almost nothing in a night sky. You have to really zoom in to actually start seeing anything. And they were able to not just see this, but to tell apart tiny variations inside the dot. And so that's already quite impressive and shows us how far we've gone from just being able to discover these to actually determining the properties of these super ancient objects. At the moment this is one of the most impressive achievements when it comes to analyzing these ancient galaxies and when it comes to cosmology in general. And by looking at this red blob they also determined that because of the total mass and the total speed of the rotation here, it's very likely that most of the mass was formed by various mature stars that formed close to the beginning of the universe. Specifically various ancient population 3 stars, which are still really mysterious because none have ever been discovered. We believe that these stars would be mostly made out of very primordial material, various types of hydrogen that doesn't exist anymore. In comparison, our sun is what's known as a population 1 star, and it technically is like a generation 30 or generation 40 star. As a matter of fact, it very likely was created after dozens and dozens of supernova, which then combined their material to create our sun. We've talked about this in one of the older videos. And so these population 3 stars, the first primordial stars, are super mysterious and we barely know anything about them. But in this case, it's quite likely that this particular galaxy contained a huge amount of them on the inside. And these stars were also responsible for essentially ending what the scientists refer to as the Dark Ages. Or in other words, they were sort of responsible for reionizing the entire universe, turning it from somewhat difficult to observe and somewhat difficult to see through into something that's a little bit more transparent where things are a lot more visible. Something that very likely began when this galaxy was born as well around 200 to 300 million years after the beginning of the universe. And so in that sense, the existence of this galaxy and the data coming from this galaxy could actually provide the scientists with quite a lot of interesting discoveries in terms of what happened in the early universe and how things evolved over time. Although some of the recent studies have also determined that the Dark Ages very likely lasted much longer, probably up to about 1 billion years or even 1.1 billion years, suggesting that it took these galaxies much much longer to disperse all of this darkness and to turn the universe into the one that we currently live in. Something that was only recently discovered by analyzing the data coming from 67 various quasars, very powerful galaxies very very far away. And so by looking at the light coming from these various quasars and by studying how it changed over time, the scientists were able to determine that some of the light seemed to be passing through some of the areas that were not reionized even a billion years after, which does suggest that the dark ages lasted much much longer. But that of course means that we also kind of got lucky in being able to see some of these galaxies at all, and so there are still quite a lot of unexplained mysteries when it comes to this period in the existence of the universe. But that's of course where James Webb Telescope comes in because it's most likely going to be able to see things that we've never even thought possible, and it's also going to be able to analyze a lot of these galaxies and see some of the things that nothing else was able to see before, which also means that we might be able to discover something else about this unusual galaxy in the next few years. And that also means that maybe you should subscribe because we'll come back and talk about this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.